for a long time I've wanted to do a tutorial on how to restore a very jacked up bench chisel like this one right here using the least costly and quickest, quickest approach possible. So don't get me wrong, there's a lot of tutorials, good tutorials on how to restore a chisel or set up a chisel and uh, those are all very good. Uh, but I find a couple things, a couple themes. One is that the equipment that they use can be kind of costly. Um, some use low speed grinders or Japanese stones or diamond stones. So all these things can cost hundreds of dollars. Um, and in addition to that, a lot of times it can take an inordinate amount of time to complete the process. Sometimes well over 30 minutes, sometimes an hour just to restore a rusty chisel to a scary sharp state. So the goal of this video is to take a chisel like this, this rusty old Miller Falls chisel, and turn it into something like this, which is actually a Stanley chisel that I sharpened, and to do it in less than five minutes using equipment, the total cost of less than 75 bucks. So where did I find this chisel? I went to eBay, and I actually searched for the worst possible chisel I could find. And this is what I found. I had to buy lots of chisels, like lots, like I had a lot of 20 and a lot of 10 and etc. So there's 28 chisels here. It's all kinds of different brands. Like here's a Miller Falls. Here's a Stanley. I think there's a Fuller chisel here. This is a Fuller brand. Uh, this is a, it's a Kmart brand chisel. Can you believe it? Uh, there's uh, more Sears chisels. There's a Popular Mechanics. There's just a wide range of brands. Most of these are made in the U.S., so they have potential. They probably have really good steel, so they have. There's a, there's a reason to rehab them. Most of these chisels are all these chisels are probably just would have been thrown away if I hadn't bought them or if someone hadn't bought them on eBay, because they were just meant for the homeowner. And generally, the homeowner they don't sharpen a chisel; they just use it till it gets dull, and then when they can't use it anymore, uh, they probably use it for a screwdriver to open paint cans. And once it doesn't do that anymore, they just throw it away or sell it at a garage sale. So. I looked through all these chisels, and this is the one that was the worst, in the worst shape. It has pitting rust on the back side. It's got pitting rust on the front, and the bevel has never been sharpened. This is the factory bevel, but if you can see there, it's got a big old nick in there. I don't know if they hit a nail. So this is the worst chisel, and this is a chisel. Actually, these both are about the same, but I took this one here, and I restored it. I got it back. I got the back flat and polished. I got the bevel reground and honed, and it's very, very sharp. And so this chisel, I got it back in shape in about, I know it's less than five minutes. I didn't time it exactly, but it was less than five minutes. So I'm going to predict that I can pull this off in five minutes. So what do I have to do? First of all, I have to soak this thing and remove the rust from it. And I'm going to do that by, I took a PVC, this is like a PVC container that I made. Uh, and I'm just going to fill it with a mild acid, which is this right here. It's white vinegar. It should probably take about 24 hours. So I filled this up just enough so it covers up to the top of the blade. And I'm going to soak it in there. And then what that does is it softens the rust. And then you can just wipe the rust off. And then you can get to work with your uh, grinding and polishing. So that's my first step. So I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I think I need to do one thing. And I need to get a baseline here. So what I want to do is get, I want to see how sharp this chisel is. I'm going to use this sharpness tester thingy here. Well, how this works is this is basically a scale. And on top of the scale, there's this little platform. And in that platform is a piece of, there's like a little filament there. It's like a little piece of string. And so what the scale does is it measures how much force it takes for an object to cut the string. So the sharper an object, the less downward force is required. So the lower score, lower score is better. So let's see how this fares. Now just keep in mind that a score of less than 120 is considered sharp. So I'm going to see how this one goes. And I'm pushing down. So we're at 725, which means this chisel is extremely dull. Probably about as sharp as a screwdriver. So that's our baseline. Now, I'd like to show you what I did with this other chisel here. I sharpened this chisel on our system here, this Stanley chisel, and I want to see how sharp it is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Okay, so I'm going to lower this down. 
Okay, so this chisel got a score of 73, which is extremely sharp. And this chisel started out almost the same as this chisel. So let me show you, and I'm so let me show you what this chisel was able to do. This chisel here was able to shave this end grain. And, I, and if you stick with me to the end of this video, I'll show you a jig, a little paring jig that I made that allowed me to do this. So I was able to pair this edge totally dead, 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 dead uh, 90 degrees, and then pair this little chamfer around here. And I wish you could feel this because it feels like glass. It is so smooth. So for me, the ultimate test uh, for sharpness is can it pair end grain? I know a lot of people like show that it can it you know shave hair on my arm or can it cut paper, but my test is a functional one. Can it pair end grain? And this paired end grain extremely well. So I'm going to go ahead and start the soaking of this one, and then we'll be back to begin the restoration process. Okay, our chisel has been soaking for just right about 24 hours, and as you can see, all of that rust has just been dissolved. I love the vinegar method for removing rust because it's just so cheap. It does such a nice job. The thing I don't like about it though is it does turn the steel dark like that. So when you inspect this chisel closely, the front of it's not too bad. It's pretty smooth, but on the back side, you can see lots of pits in there. So this is going to require a significant amount of stock to be removed to get a flat back. So normally when I'm setting up a new chisel, I would use my chisel back flattening kit, which is basically a piece of 5 16 inch float glass, so it's very flat. And then I have um, a 320 Cubitron 2 disc, a 400 grit, a 600 and a 1000 grit. So it gets, it gets it extremely flat and it gets it smooth enough for me to go right to the strop. I can't do that on this chisel. I'm going to have to, I need some more help. So I'm going to use my drill press sharpening system here. This is basically an arbor that goes in your drill press with an acrylic disc. Um, on the top here, I have 220, so I'm going to use that 220 grit to flatten this chisel most of the way, and then I can I can go back to my chisel back flattening kit here and finish it off. Then I'm going to go to the drill press and I'm going to grind the primary bevel um, on the bottom side of this disc, and I'll show you how that works. And then I finish out by removing those 80 grit scratches on the primary bevel on this 220 grit, and then I strop the back and I strop the top, and this chisel will be done. So I'm gonna do all those steps and I'm gonna time each step, individual step to see how long the whole process takes. So let's head over to the drill press, check up this acrylic disc and get to work. Okay, we're at the drill press. The way this works is I'm gonna turn the drill press on and then I have to set my chisel flat on this disc. It's very important that you do not set, you have to set the heel of the chisel back down first and then the nose. You set the nose down, you will grind this chisel and it will be ruined. So that's a little bit tricky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the, start the drill press, start my timer and see how long this takes. So I just set it down and I'm grinding. See, I, I got, I'm up to the nose a little bit. Gotta take off quite a bit of material here. And I am, See now, I'm, I'm getting really good flatness here. I'll do a little bit more. Okay, so I think that I'm gonna leave that go. That was 30, 39 seconds. I think I'm gonna let this go because I'm all the way to the nose. When I when I grind my primary bevel, regrind it, I'm gonna be okay. This little bit is not gonna affect the performance of the chisel because it's, it's not quite all the way removing those pit, pit marks, but it's flat. So I'm gonna let this go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to grind the primary bevel um, on, the, on the bottom of this disc. And I'm using this custom made ramp that I made here. And I'm just gonna come in from the bottom and I'm gonna regrind my primary bevel. I'll start the timer again. We'll see how long it takes. And now I have to remove quite a bit of material here. Grinding this at 25 degrees. See, I'm almost done. I gotta remove quite a bit of material because I had those big nicks in there. 
that we saw before. Oh, almost done. Okay, 48 seconds. It took me to regrind that bevel. Now, remember those nicks we had in there? Those nicks are gone. They have a nice smooth edge. Actually, it's very, it's very jagged because it's got a really big burr on it. So now we can run over to the chisel back flattening kit, finish out the back, and then run back to the drill press and finish this chisel. Okay, we're back at the bench, and I'm going to lap the back on this chisel back flattening kit. I'm going to start my timer and see how long it takes. So I'm actually starting on 320. I did 220 at the drill press, so now I just need to take out the scratches from the 220 on the 320. This takes a few seconds. Looking good. Now I'm going to move right over to the 400 grit, wipe off my grit. <coughs> Going to the 400. The nice thing about this kit is I can come at it from this side, and when it gets a little dull, I can flip it around and come at it from the other side, and I can also come in from the end. So I'm lapping out the 400. Okay, and I got that, and I'm going to go to 600 now. I'll go to 600. And I, this is actually not Cubitron on the back here. It's aluminum oxide. This Cubitron doesn't come finer than 400, but this lasts a long time. It does a great job, and the discs are really cheap. Now I'm going to go to 1,000. I'm going to finish this thing off. So I've been going here. Okay, so I'm done, and that took a minute and 16 seconds. So now my back is smoothed out. All I have to do now is go to my drill press and finish out and regrind this bevel to 220, take out the 80 good scratches, and then go to the strop, and this thing's done. All right, we're back at the drill press. Now what I need to do is I need to grind this bevel on this disc here, which has 220 grit, which will remove the 80 grit scratches. And then I need to go right to this uh, strop, and I'm gonna strop the back, and then I'm gonna strop the bevel. So uh, once again, I'll time this step to see how long it takes. First of all, I just gotta put a little bit of paste on here, refresh the paste. I'll go ahead and start my, ch my timer. There we go. So here we go. So all it takes is a couple seconds there. Now I drop the chisel down, heel first, and I drop the back. So it's nice and shiny. And then I put my chisel down flat on the bevel, raise it up just a little bit. Just enough to get a little bit of shine right on the edge. So that took 30 seconds. So now look what we have here. I have a back that is polished, very polished, and I have a primary bevel. You can actually see the secondary bevel. There's a little bit of a shine right there on the tip. So let's go back to the bench and see how we did with the sharpness tester. Okay, see how we did. Put this thing on the sharpness tester. All right, there we go. Got a score of 80, which is extremely sharp. So we took this chisel from a score, initial score of 725, and we got it down to a score of 80 in a whopping four minutes and 13 seconds. So this chisel has been given a new lease on life. It will serve somebody for another generation or two. So as promised, I'm gonna show you how to use this chisel here with a nice flat back and a sharp edge to pair end grain Here's an example where I paired the end grain of this board here, and it is glass smooth, and I put this chamfer on here that is perfectly sized with nice crisp corners. So the way you do that is you have to use a jig, what I call pairing jig. This pairing jig is basically just a board that has one end that's cut at 90 degrees, one end that's cut at 45, and I'll show you why that's the case. Seven and a half inches wide, nine inches long. And it has a fence embedded in here. I dadoed this fence in here. This is a, a nine, for a 90 degree reference. So the way this works is you stick your board in this in this jig and you stick it in your vise and you use it to pair. So let me show you how I set it up. So I'm gonna put my board against in my jig against the fence 
and I'm going to set it so it's sticking up just a little bit. Now, you could adjust that. I put it in there. I have this little hammer. I put a little piece of cork on here so that I can tap my either my board or my jig and not dent it. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this and get it so it's sticking up just about a 64th of an inch. I don't want to take off much. Now I'm going to take my chisel and I'm going to reference it against this pairing jig. And I'm going to move it across my piece and I'm going to slice the end grain one bite at a time. So I go across and I slice the end grain here and it is producing a glass smooth finish. Now I get to the end, I got to be careful, I don't want to blow out the back, so I kind of do it at an angle here and I kind of move it in like this. And then I have a glass smooth surface. That surface is perfectly smooth. So let's say that I want to put a chamfer on. I want to put a very exact chamfer on the end of a board. I take my board and I make a mark the same distance in from the end on all sides. This is my reference mark and I'm going to use that to set my chamfer depth. I put it in my vise like this and then I adjust it down so it's just at the line. Tighten my vise and I take my chisel and then I just go along and I just slice that off. See what I'm doing? I'm slicing that chamfer. It's perfect. So now I flip it around, flip it around, do the other side, drop it in my vise, make my adjustments. Perfect. So it's perfect. Make sure it's against, oh, moved away from the fence. There we go. And I go along here and I make a slice. Now if you're doing a big chamfer, you might have to do this in several bites, but this works great for this small of a chamfer. And I turn it sideways like this. Make sure it's against the fence. Make my adjustment. And I slice my chamfer there. And I do it again one more time. The last one. Last one, tighten it down. There you have it. There you have a perfectly formed chamfer on the end of this board that is smooth as glass with very crisp sides. So there you have it, a simple jig and a pairing chisel can do amazing things. So go ahead, pick up some chisels from a garage sale, rehab them, pick up 10, pick up 20, go ahead and rehab them, bring them back to life with the chisel back, flattening kit, and the drill press sharpening system available from taytools.com.